Okay, welcome once again to the study of the Book of Acts. And, uh, you know, we will uh, pick up from where we stopped in the last class. So if one of us can uh, lead in prayer, we'll, uh, we'll you know, uh, go forward from there. Okay, who would like to begin? Let me pray. Our Heavenly Father, Jehovah, we thank you for today. We thank you for the gift of life that you've given unto us, Jehovah. Jehovah. I commit our teacher, Nancy, and my fellow student leaders, to learn your word. Let it be a guide and a tool for us in our, in our lives. We pray for the spirit of spirit of knowledge and understanding. Study. Father, I, I, I pray that you provide for us a strong inter internet and I pray that there's no uh, 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 any, any, any interference in the mighty name in the name of Jesus. I pray believing. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Kennedy. Uh, Kennedy, uh, uh, are you keeping well? Uh, I see some messages in the chat. Uh, were you unwell? I was unwell. I was under treatment, but now I'm out of work. Okay. How are you doing now? Uh, I'm still under, still under med medication, uh -huh. but it's my prayer. Things need to be well. Yeah. Okay. Sure, yeah. Kennedy. We'll uh, you know we'll keep you in prayer. Yeah, thank you for joining the class uh, despite uh, you know your health issues yeah all right so uh we were in acts chapter 15 so we will go back to that passage we saw how uh, there were some men from judea who created uh, confusion through their teaching and uh, that was a uh, um, you know, very unpleasant thing. In, in fact, uh, we are told that both Paul and Barnabas, they disputed with these men and they thought it best to um, meet the apostles in Jerusalem. And by that time, we also saw how the leadership in Jerusalem had developed from just the apostles to, uh, you know, uh, several other elders who had joined them so they went to the council and then they give an explanation uh, about the the fact that gentiles god is working among the gentiles and peter stands up he shares his experience we can see how god worked in the heart of peter to change his perspective about the gentiles so you know this is true for uh, all of us god works in our hearts according to his purposes according to his standards so we see a very different peter who first uh, is seen as such a devout uh, jew who would not do anything um, you know against the jewish traditions but you know he steps into a gentile's house he eats with the gentiles uh, and uh, that is something that he shares and then you know we um, see that there are some pharisees among the people in the council who are also unwilling to uh, hear the message Okay. But when these things are spoken, uh, they're at least in a place where they are open to listening to what God is doing. So, you know, they flow with the move of God. And that is the positive thing about this Jerusalem council. Now, let's uh, uh, pick up from the place where James stands and speaks. So we said that this James, he is the... Uh, writer of the book of James and he's also the half brother of uh, Jesus he's not the apostle James who was put to the put to um, the sword by Herod earlier on you know in Acts 12 uh, something that we have read so now let's uh, pick up mm, I think we stopped Uh, 
Okay, what we'll do is, uh, let's read from seven. I think that will be helpful. So then, you know, there's some continuity in what we are discussing. So, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to read from seven. There will be a little bit of overlap uh, with last class, but that's okay. Um, so it says, and when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, men and brethren, you know that a good while ago, God chose among us that by my mouth, the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our, <coughs> excuse me, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Then all the multitude kept silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul declaring how many miracles and wonders God had worked through them among the Gentiles. And after they had become silent, James answered saying, men and brethren, listen to me. Simon has declared how God at the first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And with this the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. After this, I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins and I will set it up so, uh, so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even at the Gentiles who are called by my name, even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does all these things. Known to God from eternity are all his works. Therefore, I judge that we should not trouble those from among the Gentiles who are turning to God, but that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality and things strangled, and from blood. For Moses has had throughout many generations those who preach him in every city being read in the synagogues every sabbath then it pleased the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to antioch with paul and barnabas namely judas who was also named barsabas and silas leading men among the brethren okay. so uh okay Should we we shall uh, read the remaining till verse 29 and then i will uh, you know share some thoughts from here they wrote this letter by them the apostles the elders and the brethren to the brethren who are of the gentiles in antioch syria and cilicia greetings since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with words unsettling your souls saying you must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good to us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who will also report the same things by the word of mouth, for it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well, farewell. Okay, so uh, we have seen, you know, with regard to the Jerusalem Council and their decision, a couple of things. We saw that there were leaders who went with what God was doing at that point, and they um, stood by what is right. You know, and the right standard offered by the word of God for one to receive salvation. And we know that, you know, that is to put one's faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, believe on him, confess him, and then you know, 
go on to live a godly life go on to discover the purpose of god for one's life and you know live it out fully however at this point we uh, seen that god was touching new communities gentiles uh, uh, where one particular community that we saw god was ministering to very specifically so the doors uh, of the gospel had been opened up to the gentiles now though the wrong teaching came in and this burden okay so we see uh, that the apostles looked at this teaching about gentiles needing circumcision for salvation as a burden so when this wrong teaching came in the uh, important thing that uh, you know um, needed to be done was uh, an understanding uh, the leaders had to arrive to an understanding and make it very clear to the church so you had peter uh, go by what god was doing you have you had the paul and barnabas state what god was doing among the gentiles now hearing these matters thankfully you know the leader of the church at that time who is james he takes a positive step forward and he brings a conclusion to the matter so you, we see how important it is for us to have clear standards because if there is confusion what what would happen is we might have some churches following this rule that uh, okay circumcision is required for gentiles and then some other churches putting their faith in christ you know just uh, receiving uh, the the grace of god okay not so much not the works of god so there would have been a lot of confusion but when it comes to leadership okay leadership has to be clear about standards so thank god james was clear he made a decision he said we do not want to put any burden on the gentiles particularly uh, this matter of circumcision and you know he was well versed in scripture just the way peter and you know some of the others were where he states uh, this truth about the tabernacle of david and he says look when god spoke uh, uh, in the book of amos about the tabernacle of david he did mention that gentiles would come so what we are seeing right now is the fulfillment of that scripture so he is trying to justify biblically okay and that's also important for leadership because we might tell people to do this and that but what is the biblical basis behind it you know that's the question thank god james made a clear statement he also did it on the basis of scripture and he says this is what we were told um that the gentiles would come to know god and that is happening and therefore we should not stop them uh and for the sake of um you know respect of the communities and with this uh, sensitivity to the communities in mind there were still a couple of uh, decisions that were made so we will look at it you know what were the decision decisions that were made so here in acts 15 um uh, verse 20 uh, obviously by now it's established that circumcision is not required but what would be required was 20 he says but that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols from sexual immorality from things strangled and from blood so circumcision you know there was no biblical basis for circumcision to be uh put upon the gentiles however there were a couple of things that were requested of the gentiles and these things were not to 
uh, uh, you know, engage with things, you know, to do with idols. So uh, they are being told, abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, and from things strangled, and from blood. So why is it that uh, um, the leaders give some instructions? It's possible that even though the Gentiles accepted Christ, they were still walking in some of their cultural practices. It's possible that, uh, you know, they, they had these um, as a part of their lifestyle. Maybe some did not understand the importance of cutting away from idols and, uh, you know, to please the, the uh, uh, people. They probably were engaging in these matters and which the leaders were aware about. So that is the reason some rules and some instructions are still given to the Gentiles. But these are not prerequisites for salvation. They are more uh, cultural and uh, you could say lifestyle related, uh, just so that the Gentiles can keep their lives holy. That is one. Second is that they too can be sensitive to the Jews because obviously, you know, worship of idols, strangled things, blood, these are all uh, practices which the Jews abhorred. And obviously, uh, we did not want a division between Jews and Gentiles. So the rules that were finally given or spoken of by James uh, were to honor God, but also to maintain peace among the communities. And that's how we look at this. And uh, notice how once this decision was made, uh, Paul and Barnabas had come from the church of Antioch. And uh, that is where, you know, uh, this, this issue uh, had been picked up. So the leaders want to send a clear message once again. And one of the ways in which they could clarify it was by writing a letter. So they're actually writing a letter and uh, see how, you know, it follows a, a certain format, the apostles, the elders and the brethren and at verse 23. And it says to the brethren who are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria and Cilicia. So they are very directly addressing the issue in the regions of concern. So there's a lot of clarity. So you, we understand, you know, when we talk about leadership also, how do we lead? How do we instruct? How do we provide, you know, guidance uh, to people? It's very specific uh, and it's very intentional. So there is a letter being written. One of the reasons why this letter could have been written and so specifically, you know, from the apostles, elders and all uh, to the, churches here is so that the matter does not get diluted. Sometimes through word of mouth, we know that whatever is stated, let's say by a leader or uh, someone, by the time it is carried to people on the ground, a completely different story you know, could uh, um, uh, uh, would be understood by the people. But the apostles did not want that. They wanted the issue to be addressed in a very, very clear and a specific way. So how did they do it? They wrote a letter specifically to the churches of concern. And they stated things as uh, they were. Basically, they had, uh, you know, something to mention about sending two godly people with uh, uh, Paul and Barnabas. So the team is growing, the Antioch team. So you had Judas and Silas who went along with Paul and Barnabas. But they include this issue from verse 28. And they say, for it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us 
to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things that you abstain from things offered to idols from blood from things strangled and from sexual immorality if you keep yourselves from these you will do well farewell so very clear message okay so those days they did not have email maybe they would have uh, emailed or put it up on their website to clarify uh, you know this matter about circumcision uh, but they wanted the issue to be resolved in a very clear way so uh, this is a an apostolic way you know of dealing with things so clear the issue came up they looked at scriptures they figured out okay is this is this scriptural is this outside of scripture they determined and notice here there's another point which we see uh the letter says for it seemed good to the holy spirit so they with their understanding could conclude that circumcision is not a prerequisite for salvation but they also obviously um were open to listening to the voice of the holy spirit and they were sure that the holy spirit also gave them confirmation affirmation that you know the decision which they have made is the right decision so on the basis of the word on the basis of the work of the spirit they conclude and they instruct people clearly so from that point on it must have been easy for um, uh, you know the people to follow the right thing okay great so we shall continue here uh, there is a little bit about you know how ministry um, we are focusing on paul so paul's ministry um, uh, moves forward from this point so from verse 30 uh, would somebody like to read please from verse 30 till verse 41 Verse thirty to verse forty one. I can hear. Are you hearing me? Oh, yes, yes, Taisha, I hear you now. Would you like to read? I was asking which chapter, which chapter are you? Huh? Okay, I'm in Acts 15. Okay, and you're Acts asking 15. us to read verse, yeah, verse 30. 30. Yeah, till 41. Okay, sure. I'll go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So when they were dismissed, they came to yeah. When they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets, also themselves exalted, exhorted the, the brethren with many words and confirmed them. Verse 33, and after they had tarried there a space, after they had tarried there a space, they were let go in peace from the virgin unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas to abide there still. Paul also and Barnabas continued to, in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of God with many others also. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our virgin, in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. 
And Barnabas determined to take with him John, with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And contention was so sharp between them that they departed one from the other. So Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Silas. Paul, who Paul chose Silas and, and departed, being recommended by the virgin um, unto grace of God. The fourth one you said. And he went through Syria and Syria confirming uh, churches. Okay, sure. Thank you, uh, Taisha. So this is the You're end welcome. of uh, chapter 15. Yeah, this is the end of uh, Acts 15. Um, in the initial portion, we saw how, um, you know, the Jerusalem Council based on the scripture from Amos, uh, Amos uh, chapter 9, I think verses 11 and 12, based on that, that matter is settled. And after that, uh, the letter is sent to the church of Antioch and you know a couple of other churches in the region. And we know that Judas and Silas came along with Paul and Barnabas. Now, talking about the church of Antioch, we said that it was a, a very important city by now and uh, 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 a church which was which had gentiles and you know predominantly gentiles we could say so had uh, thrived and grown and god was working through this particular church earlier we saw there were many teachers in the church okay but uh, you see how ministry um by various you know men and women of god really strengthens the church now though they had people within the church you know they had teachers and we also have people like paul and barnabas who are teachers the leaders of jerusalem sent judas and silas and what was the um, kind of ministry that judas and silas had to offer they were prophets we are told so uh, already there are there is a bunch of uh, teachers now we have prophets joining this you know beautiful multicultural uh, church and uh, pastoral team and what do the prophets have to bring you know they exhorted and strengthened the brethren with many words now we all understand about the gift of prophecy now first corinthians 14 3 where we know that prophecy is meant to edify exhort comfort and that is why we read about the ministry of judas and silas that they exhorted or they encouraged the believers not only that the church was strengthened so through every ministry what's happening the church is being strengthened so antioch is this growing um and you know strong church you know, out of which God uh, uh, does mighty exploits. So that is what is happening right now in the church of Antioch. And we also learn uh, uh, verse 33, and after they had stayed there for a time, they were sent back with greetings from the brethren to the apostles. So it is estimated, you know, something like they say after the missionary journey, first missionary journey, it could have been, about five years before Paul stepped out on the next missionary journey. You know, some some uh, people say that. So this is a long period of time when the, the Jerusalem Council happened and then you have the prophets coming down to Antioch church, strengthening the church. And then they finally, um, uh, Judas leaves, but Silas stays on. Okay, So one of the prophets decides to stay out. Verse 35, Paul and Barnabas also remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of God with many others also. So we uh, notice, you know, more of a pastoral kind of a ministry, shepherding their flock, all that is continuing. Then 
verse 36 then after some days paul said to barnabas so this is the decision of paul to go on the next missionary journey so he is telling barnabas okay let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the lord and see how they are doing so we remember the first missionary journey isn't it we uh, saw cities like uh, 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 antioch of sidia we saw lystra we saw iconium uh, derby all of these cities where Paul and Barnabas went, they spoke, there were some Jews who were willing, um, but you know, eventually when the Jews were not willing, they ministered to the Gentiles, and that's how this entire journey took place. Now, Paul is um, concerned about these churches. Yes, we planted the churches, but how are they doing? How are the people doing? So he never forgot about the churches that were planted and which is why he was telling Barnabas let us go back into each of the cities where we preach the word and let us see how they are doing okay again it's very apostolic very pastoral to uh, really care for the spiritual health of the people but there was a um, you know a, an unpleasant uh, situation and what was that Barnabas he wanted to take along with him uh, a young person known as John Mark now we talked about John Mark uh, earlier and we said that you know he was from Mary's house uh, this is in Acts 12 um, but what was wrong with John Mark we saw that John Mark actually um, left the missionary journey the first missionary journey and he went back home so this was in acts 13 13 that's where we saw and now barnabas is insisting that you know he wants to take along with him john mark uh but this idea is is not pleasing to paul uh and why is it not pleasing to paul you know we recognize that both barnabas and Paul had very, very different um, personalities. While Barnabas was accommodating, uh, you could even say forgiving, no, Paul was this zealous person um, who felt that John Mark failed them on the very first missionary journey that uh, they undertook as a team. So he did not want a person with with you know that kind of an attitude we and we don't know because uh luke does not record the exact reason you know maybe john mark was homesick or he was um, um exhausted from the journey or uh, he was just overwhelmed by uh, this assignment of going and ministering to people we don't know you know the exact reason why but for paul uh whatever the reason john mark had failed and uh, he had settled it in his heart that he would not involve this person anymore in the ministry but barnabas being an encourager we uh, also uh, understand from some other passages uh, in the bible that uh, john mark was barnabas's cousin okay uh, but barnabas wanted to take john mark along uh, verse 38 but paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them in pamphylia had not gone with them to the work and look at this verse 39 then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another and so barnabas took mark and sailed to cyprus but paul chose silas and departed okay and again being commended by the brethren to the grace of god and he went through syria and cilicia strengthening the churches so paul and barnabas they probably argued uh, contention you know the word used there is contention they probably argued it was a sharp contention so they disagreed with each other 
in the ministry there's a personality clash you know, that's taking place uh, who was right who was wrong you know, luke doesn't write about that at all and neither do the people you know comment on who's right and who's wrong because what we read is they disagreed paul picked silas you know, who had stayed on at antioch barnabas picked john mark and what did the people do they just commended you know uh, uh, they, they they were happy with whatever decision was made and uh, they just wanted you know paul and barnabas to continue on the missionary journey so nobody is telling them who is right and who is wrong probably that was not even the question it was just that they both had very different personalities and it could happen you know even as we serve the lord uh it's possible that we find people who are different from us and they process matters you know in in a in a way that we can't even imagine but a lesson which we can learn here is um uh, you know we we must really depend on the lord and it is unpleasant you know for for contentions to happen and uh, disagreements to happen and it is sort of unfortunate that barnabas and paul had to part ways what if they found a way of working out their differences maybe both of them would have gone on the second missionary journey together we don't know okay but that would have been better unfortunately you know they did not do that um uh, and uh, thankfully it's in the bible for us today and uh, we can understand that yeah there will be people with uh, differing personalities who work with us but we've got to learn to work together for the sake of god's kingdom okay so that is how um, uh, this chapter ends and uh, we will now read more about paul and silas ministering to churches through their second missionary journey so verse 41 says and he went through syria and cilicia strengthening the churches so let me see if i can share a picture of the second missionary journey with us and then we can talk about it pastor yes yes brother yeah. do we have uh, any record of the further ministry later ministry of barnabas in the history because we But, don't see read it in the bible yeah it is the barnabas who uh, introduced paul to apostles at jerusalem and then he goes to tarsus and brings uh, paul back to antioch Mm -hmm. So he was instrumental in bringing power. Yes. To yes. the mainstream. So, but uh, about his later ministry, we don't read anywhere. Do we have anything in history about uh, Barnabas' further ministry after uh, this point? Okay, about Barnabas, uh, uh, you do have a little bit of mention in um, uh, you know in the book of Corinthians and. Uh, uh yeah so you know in in other other episodes you have a small mention about barnabas but uh i don't think we have details about his ministry okay so for example in the book of corinthians first corinthians uh, uh 9 verse 6 um uh, the paul states Uh, or is it only Barnabas and I who have no right to refrain from working? So he kind of talks about Barnabas uh, as his co-worker, but we don't know, uh, you know, where Barnabas went and what kind of ministry he engaged in. Those details are not there in the Bible. So we'll have to depend on some extra biblical um, reports and accounts. But then again, you know, anything that's extra biblical. Um, we are not very sure we are not very sure because uh you know yeah it's it's difficult to affirm 
So I I don't I don't know if uh, my answer was helpful at all, Brother Manohar. Very difficult helpful. Yeah, because that's all there is. Uh, you know, that's yeah. all that I can. Yeah. No, for the record, that's all. He might have yeah. ministered. Yeah. Ministered uh, truly has ministered. Uh, uh, he might have done a great ministry elsewhere. Correct. Correct. But no record is available. That's what. That's what. Mm -hmm. And there's only speculation. Like even if you read about the book of Hebrews, no, people say that. Um, the style of writing is uh, different from the epistles of Paul, uh, but somewhere the content is similar to the epistles of Paul. Uh, so maybe you know one of the one of the um, people who is thought to have written Hebrews is Barnabas, but we oh. don't know. We don't know. Uh, most theologians take it as Paul was the writer of Hebrews. But there are all these speculations, you know. So Barnabas is one of the people who people say could have written the book of Hebrews. Uh, others also say, uh, you know, Apollos wrote it. So we don't know, brother. All this speculation. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But uh, yeah, good, good to see how... You know, Barnabas did his his uh, task. Uh, I know it was not easy. He brought Paul on the scene, and now Paul is popular. But Barnabas continues to do his work, and he's being gracious to another uh, young person who has seemingly made a mistake at Pamphylia, John Mark. But you know, Barnabas is is uh, fine with his personality. And thank God that, you know, God uh, gave Barnabas opportunity to serve him. So did, you know, uh, he give Paul an opportunity to serve him. So that's how this whole thing went. Uh, okay, so let's let's just go to Acts 16. I think I will show you the map once we come back. There is uh, only four, six minutes left. So we can talk about... Um, Paul going back to um, the old regions. And what does Paul do there? We'll see that. So Acts chapter 16, I will read it. I will read five verses. It says, then he came to Derby and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted to have him go on with him. And he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region. For they all knew that his father was Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered to them the decrees to keep which were determined by the apostles and elders at Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in faith and increased in number daily. So we see that in the cities where they had served during the first missionary journey, they find a young person who is who has a good testimony, you know, like one of those volunteers we talked about uh, early on who served the tables. They had a good testimony. Uh, people were filled with the Holy Spirit, good report, uh, full of wisdom, full of faith. That is a description that we saw about those uh, early volunteers in the Church of Jerusalem. Similarly, Timothy in uh, Lystra, uh, he is a young person with a good testimony. Okay, He is in the Lord. Now, Paul sees potential in this young person to serve God. So this is something like, you know, when Jesus saw Nathaniel, he knew in his spirit, here is a man without guile where he could discern prophetically, you know, the, the kind of person that Nathaniel was. And when Jesus saw Peter, he said, you know, P you Peter, 
you are the rock so he spoke his destiny he declared his destiny over him when you know peter was nothing peter did not even know uh, what his uh, life would be like but jesus spoke prophetically you know about his future in the same way we believe that god would have given paul that uh, discerning to know the destiny of timothy you know later on we know that he was uh, the overseer uh, of a very important church the church of ephesus uh, but these were the initial days and somebody needed to see the destiny of timothy to pick him and to begin to groom him and that's exactly what paul did so again you know we've studied about this in uh, um, uh, kingdom builders and house of god fathering fathering and mothering so what's happening paul knew that he needed to raise up many leaders for the kingdom so here he notices timothy he picks timothy he takes him along on the journey but he does one more very important thing for timothy what is that we are told uh no where is this okay verse 3 paul wanted to have him go on with him and he took him and circumcised him because of the jews who were in that region for they all knew that his father was greek okay this is a little confusing here is paul we are told that they had um, you know they had a dispute with the men from judea who taught about circumcision okay circumcision is not required for salvation that was the whole fight uh, you know that that was the reason for the whole fight uh, end of acts 14 acts uh, 15 but acts 16 when when we read this in the greek you know paul it says he took him and circumcised so the understanding there is he forcefully took timothy and got him circumcised so you know we ask the question paul how could you do this you were the one who was fighting against the tradition of circumcision you know for salvation but uh, you're picking a godly person and you're circumcising him so the uh, what we recognize here is it was not about circumcision but it was more about timothy's future so paul knew that his mother was jewish but his father was greek and so as timothy uh, you know grows in in his role uh, as an overseer uh, and also you know ministers to the jewish community what could happen in the future so this is paul's foresight he's looking into the future and he knows that timothy might face a lot of opposition so he looks at an advantage in timothy's background his mother was a jewess so with that as an excuse what he does is he circumcises timothy so when timothy you know becomes a pastor later on and the jews question him hey, timothy you know how could you even preach to us and your father was greek the fact that timothy is circumcised you know will make him more acceptable by the jews so you see how paul is thinking way ahead for uh, a young person whom he is now going to start grooming in the ministry but you see the way you know one is uh, looking into the future and uh, uh, you know helping helping a, a team member or a co-worker uh, get ready for the future so that was the reason why paul circumcised timothy okay so we must understand the the actual meaning here and not get confused that someone who spoke against circumcision uh, as a you know prerequisite for salvation that same individual is circumcising a young person Okay, so uh, let me just stop here. Uh, if you have any thoughts regarding this, I think we can come back and discuss. So let's take a 10-minute break and uh, we shall be back. So we'll meet at 10.01. Thank you.